LeBron has chosen one tatted. Normally when guys have nicknames, they have them tatted on themselves. Do you have King of R&B tatted? I got a king on my leg though, but I got that way before I said I was King of R&B. Like, okay. like, I would have said, it's, I think it's somewhere. Yeah, I, I did that okay. when I was like 18, but I cut mixed. That, I that, mixed. that look like you drew that one. <laughs> <laughs> all my life, been grinding all my life. Sacrifice, hustle paid the price. Want a slice, got the roll of dice, that's why. All my life, I've been grinding all my life, look. All my life, been grinding all my life. Sacrifice, hustle paid the price. Want a slice, got the roll of dice, that's why. All my life, I've been grinding all my life. Hello, welcome to another edition of Club Shay Shay. I am the host, also the proprietor of Club Shay Shay, and the guy that's stopping by for a drink and conversation is a Georgia-born singer. I love having guys from the A. A songwriter, rapper, choreographer, dancer, multi-platinum star, self-proclaimed king of R&B from the A, Jacquees. Bruh. Jacquees. Oh. Quee. Do, do, am I the only one to get that wrong? Everybody nah, nah, it. nah, everybody. Because ja see, you came back right and said quee. Quee. So it's good. Jacquees. Yes, sir. Bruh, how you doing? I'm doing good. Man, you know, anytime we have somebody on the show, especially like your talent, we always toast. We got to toast the okay. third album. Okay. For the third album. And you said rapper. I'm a singer. I'm the king of R&B. King of R&B. Yeah. No rapping. No rapping. Oh, but bad. I did have a top 20 song that's rap. I mean, top 30 song. Wait, what? <laughs> but I'm not a rapper. <laughs> so that means me and you talented. Exactly. Cheers, Cheers to that. Yeah. You say it's been a minute since you've been on that brown, so we better not drink too much of that. Shh, that brown, man. <laughs> you know about that brown. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, you told me you just got off the road. You're in Sacramento with a group Duval, Monica, Trey Songs. Oh, uh, yeah, San Francisco. Yep. San Francisco. How was that? It was good, man. Um, the Bay Area always show love. I've been performing in the Bay Area since about 2016, so we was in the arena this time. You know, the same spot with Steph didn't play. Chase Center. Chase Center had it sold out. It was crazy, man. Like, I, I loved it. It was a good experience. Man, uh, you was telling me about, okay, your ex is actually produced by Future, mm -hmm. and you got a new bar, uh, a new bar opened up in Stonecrest, uh -huh. Wine and Tapas Bar. Mm -hmm. But we were talking off camera, you're like, bro, I had to put some food on the menu. Oh, yeah, I had to. Because <laughs> you know us. We ain't coming in there for the, for the crackers and the cheese. Right, right. We want the shrimp and grits. The, the salmon bites, right. you know, the street corn. You know, we want all You that. got it like that? Yeah, we got all that. So I don't know how, why you call it wine and tapas, because you got a full menu. I mean, because, you know, when you come in there, we had the crackers and cheese laid right. out, because there's certain people that want the wine and the cheese, but right. like I say, like, you get to looking too hard, and you get to seeing that shrimp and grits, and your stomach get to going, and you get to want that. You want that. Exactly. So what made you decide to open a place like that? You're from, Like you said, you're from the A, you're born and raised, mm -hmm. and you're like, you know what, I think, People my age, my vibe, want to feel this. This the feeling. This, this well, the vibe. Well, you know, I'm from the east side, and Stonecrest okay. on the east side. I'm yeah. from West the Chapel. You know, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. I'm from West the Chapel. Yeah, I'm from the Chapel. <laughs> so, uh, so you know, I'm from right there. You know, being from that side, we always have to go downtown to right. like feel fancy or right. feel elegant right. or something like that. So I'm like, man, I want to bring this to the east side because right. we got some people over here that's fly that deserve to, you know, not travel so far that should have it right here in their neighborhood. Right. So. I partnered up with a lady named Vanika Marks, mm -hmm. and we started the Wine and Tapas Lounge. She already had it going. You know, I, I just put my two cents in on it to right. kind of take it to another level. Right. And we offer people some jobs in the community. You know, I feel real good about that, you know, letting people in on it. And it's still a cool thing, because it's like, people get to see me up there. Like, you right. get to come up there and actually see me not being right. an artist. You get to see me being Jacquees. And right. I'm the like, owner. Yeah, Operator. real talk, the right. owner. And it's like, it gives people a different insight on me, and I think it just brings me closer to my fans. So. I think it's something real good for the community. You've been in the game for over a decade. How are you feeling about your career thus far? Man, been in the, been in the game for over a decade, it's crazy. Uh, I'm feeling good about my career. Of course, you know, it's other levels that I want to reach. Okay. You know, I was, just, I was just reading a message from my pops this morning. He texted me at like six. He like, man, I just want to tell you I love you, man, and uh, don't stop shooting for the stars. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yeah, for sure, I ain't gonna never stop shooting, shooting for the stars, you know? Of course, we always feel like we could be bigger. You okay. know, that's I think that's everybody that's great. But I believe in God, so I know his timing is perfect. So I'm like, okay, if this is the position I'm in right now, you know, I know I got ways to go. And it make me feel good, because I know I haven't reached my peak at all right. yet. You know, I'm 28 years old, I got a long way to go. I'm trying to figure out, how did you just decide to come up with the king of R&B? Because you know there's gonna be a lot of pushback, because they're like, hold on, wait a minute. You just got in this thing a decade, bro. There been people doing this 20, 30 years. Yeah. And you gonna call yourself the king of R&B. Why did you decide to come up with that title? Man, 
Really, I was on the road. Okay. I had just left a show. I had did like two shows in one day. It was some radio shows. And I was I was in the car on the way to the next uh, airport to leave that uh, city. Right. And they was like, man, that was Jacquees uh, that just shut down the stage. It was a radio show. And they like, right. man, he just killed it. That's really the king of R&B. Like, if you got kids, like, he the king of R&B for this generation. Okay. So I went in the airport. And I was just by myself, like that, you know, that, just chilling. It, it was on my mind. Good too, huh? It was on my mind, you feel me? So I just pulled out my camera and like, you know what, man? I'm the king of R&B for this generation. And I think it went over everybody's head because I actually said for this generation. generation right. You know, but the conversation sparked so much heat. It, right. it was crazy. You know, everybody say, you know, R&B dead and R&B that. But it's like, you think about it, I really brought the conversation, like, to the forefront. Mm -hmm. You know, people start going on the king of R&B tours. They got shows called Queens of R&B. Right. Like, they just... The whole thing, you know, I had people that was talking about me that I never knew, like, had even known me. Like, man, are. I'm talking about Bobby Brown said something. Like, dang, that's hard. You know, even right. though no matter what they said, I was just happy that they was, you. exactly. You know, I was just happy that my name was in their mouth, you know, and it, and it worked. I feel like that was the biggest thing that I ever did in my career because it, it, it just did so much for me. Like, that was the biggest press I could have ever had. Right. Nobody ever told me, like, hey, say you're the king of R&B. Only thing somebody told me to do is name my album that, because I wasn't gonna name my album the King of R&B. Right. But a lady named Rochelle from my team, she was like, "You should name your album King of R&B now, because if you don't name it King of R&B now, you don't cause all that ruckus. When somebody else do it, you're gonna be mad and you can never do it again." Right. So I'm like, "Let me just take my shot now," and I did it, and I took whatever came with it. Well, who's your competition in this generation R&B, the King of R&B? Who's the competition? I don't know, man. I've been doing it for so long. Like you gotta think, like I've been dropping mixtapes since. 2010 or something like right. that, you know? So I came from the mixtape era, like before streaming mm -hmm. and all that, like back when I was giving people my CDs, back right. when you can go on live mixtapes and that piff and download them. So I feel a lot different about who I am as an artist, more so than other artists that just came in the game. Right. Like no disrespect to them, but I feel like my grind was harder. Like it, it, it wasn't like go viral back then. It right. was like get out here in the streets, sing, let's see what's going on. Right. You couldn't just go viral. Right. But I respect the viralness because I go viral these days, right. you know, but I know where I got it from. And I just know me putting in that work for all those years and those my fans growing up with me for all those times. Like, you got to understand these girls that was 14. Now they like 28. They got kids. Right. And they like, man, I done had these Probably kids to your, your music. Exactly. Yeah, so it's like, like, like I'm a the, part of their life yeah, soundtrack. Yeah, so it's different up. for me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I just feel like that about myself for this generation. So let me ask you, OK, T.I. called himself the king of the South. Uh, LeBron is the king. Um, I mean, LeBron has chosen one tatted. Normally, when guys have nicknames, they have them tatted on themselves. Do you have King of R&B tatted on tatted now, on I got a king on my leg, though, but I got that way before I said I was King of R&B. Like, okay. like, I was it's, it's, I think it's somewhere. Yeah, I, I did that okay. when I was, like, 18, but I cut mixed. Cut, I that, mixed. Cut, that look like you drew that one. <laughs> I, I, I don't know the real now. You say like you drew that one. If I get tatted that, that early, you know it's yeah, like yeah, yeah. Did that tattoo a homeboy did that one or something. But I had to get it. I've been calling myself like king and want to be a king. You know what I'm right. saying? So I just feel like it, it was all written. Right. You talked about it earlier, and I've heard a lot of people say R and B is dead. R and B is dead. R and B is dead. Is R and B is R and B dead, or what can if it's not dead, I mean, obviously people, it's not, I don't know, I don't want to say it's not what it once was, but seemingly everybody is the little, all the, the seven little guys, that little baby, little dirt, little this, little that, and, and you know, you're, you know all, all the guys, you know. So it's, is R&B dead or what, what's going on with R&B? I don't think R&B dead, but, you know, the difference between rap and R&B, right. you'll have the top R&B guys, but they won't collaborate. Right. But you'll have the top rap guys and they'll collaborate. I don't know, it's something about R&B that? I don't know, man. Like, I just I just was around a bunch of the R&B guys uh, at the Rock Nation brunch. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to break everybody in. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, let's do it. Like, let's, you know, giving them something real. Like, come on, let's do it. Like, and... I mean, it's it's there, but you know what I'm saying? It's different from the rappers. Because the rappers, you know, we like, let's do it and we go do it. Right. But the singers, it's you like... You ain't no rapper, though. <laughs> but I but but I came up like that. Okay. You know, I was in every rap camp. You know, I'm yeah, signing yeah. cash money. <laughs> yes. You know what I'm saying? And look at where I'm from, you know, and the people that I grew up around. It's just in me the way I move. Like I'm an R and B singer for sure. I'm smooth to death. Right. But when it comes to the way I handle business, more so sometimes I, I probably would handle it like a rapper because more so than singles with rappers, rappers might not tell you to talk to their manager. Right. Rappers might just be like, let's go get it in. Right. Versus the singer might be like, man, holla at my A&R and holla at my manager and right. all that. You're like, man, I ain't got time. And there's so many people involved, they're going to 
then by the time it get back to you, that's like, nah, we're not gonna be able to do that. Like it's watered down, bro, because I was really coming to you genuinely. Like right. I was coming to you to rock with you. Like right. I like your music, but I actually was trying to get to know you as a person so we could rock. Right. But now it's like, eh, I don't even like the song like that no more. <laughs> <laughs> you don't gave up on the song just that quick. You know what I'm saying? So it's, what 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 drew you to R and B? What drew me to R and B? Did you listen to a lot of R and B when you were growing up? Because you know, in the south, oh, you yeah. growing up, we know. Teddy Pendergrass and, you know, Harold Melvin and all those guys. I mean, that's what you, you clean in the house. You listen to R&B. It wasn't no rap going on back in the day. Man, my sister was a big fan of the king of R&B. You know, she was a huge fan of him. You know, she's had all his pictures. Mm -hmm. She used to play all the music. So I feel like by me hearing that and seeing my sister, like, it, it kind of got in me a little bit. Of course, I love Michael Jackson. Right. And uh, David Ruffin, The Temptations okay, and yeah, things yeah. like that. But just what I grew up around, like, and my mama, my mama played a lot of the Isley Brothers. Mm -hmm. She played a lot of Earth, Wind, and Fire. Oh, yes. My mama played the, the, the jams, and I go to my auntie's house, and she'll play the radio a lot out here, genuine on the radio. Just all that, I feel like it brought me to it. But what really inspired me the most, I think it was the child, Michael Jackson. Like, when I seen him as a kid, I'm right. like, dang, like, that's Michael Jackson as a kid. And I was young at the time. So right. I'm like, I feel like I can do that. I got into my first talent show at nine years old. And I won. And after I won, I was just like, I could really become this. I right. won in 04, I did it. I didn't do it 05 because I felt like the star. You know, I went to middle school, did it in six, won in six, seven, eighth, ninth. After I won in ninth grade, I'm like, I'm gonna get somebody else a shot. <laughs> and, that's when I, and that's when I started getting into the real recording studio right. and stuff and, you know, start making my name as an artist, Jacquees, because I was always just Jacquees from the neighborhood right. with the braces who can sing. Right. You know, that's who I was. And, I took it to Jacquees on YouTube, then right. Jacquees with Block, or Jacquees with them, or now Jacquees with Cash Win and Jacquees on TV. Like, we took it all the way up. Is that one of the things that now is because you can use, and, and you said you wanted to be up under an umbrella, mm -hmm. but a lot of people like, you know, we can do this thing independent. We got YouTube. We got other avenues that we can put out, we can d display our talents mm -hmm. without having to go to a, a big recording uh, um, entity. Um, what made you decide, obviously you got your start on YouTube, but what made you decide to say, you know what, nah, I want the umbrella? Man, what happened was, I remember I was, um, I was leaving from, uh, La Vista Road. Okay. You know La Vista Road. I know that. exactly. I, know I was leaving from La Vista Road, man, and I was, it was like 2014. Mm -hmm. And I was with my manager, Jonathan. We had just dropped my project, 19. 19 was going crazy. It's one right. of my biggest projects to this day. And I remember... I was telling Jonathan, like, man, we got a lot of new artists coming out, but they they going straight to TV and radio. Mm -hmm. I'm like, we killing it on the internet, you know, and I got a fan base, but I'm like, we got to get on the radio and the, and the TV screen. We mm -hmm. didn't have no knowledge of how to do it at the time. Right. You know, we fresh in this. Like, we just, we just knew. Like, my manager, brand new. I'm the first artist he managed. Of course, he dealt with other artists, but I'm the first one he really, like, put his hand all the way yeah. in. You know okay. what I'm saying? Yeah. So we knew together. So I'm like, man... I got to call somebody. I end up calling Rich Homie Corn Daddy. Okay. Corey. And I'm like, man, Corey, I want to get with Rich Gang. Like, I see what Corn and Thug doing. Like, I want to get with y'all. He like, man, that's crazy. I'm with Birdman right now. Right. I'm like, for real? He like, yeah. I'm like, he like, send me a song. I end up sending him a song called Soldier that me and Corn had did. And uh, he was like, he called me back. He was like, man, send me the video. And I sent him the video. And on the next call, it was Birdman. Birdman was like, man, don't even trip, young. You know, I'm going to put you down. He like, I'm going to put you down with us. And I was like, you know, I knew his voice. I'm like, damn, this Birdman, for real. I just made it happen. Right. I went and met Birdman. I got the deal, you know. So it was just more so all the artists that was coming in, I feel like they was kind of taking a step over me, but I knew my worth, you right. know. So I'm like, I got to get with some people that could put me on the level that they get into. Right. And so that's why I decided to sign with Birdman. I used to always say as a kid I wanted to sign with Cash Money, too. So it was just all right. rap. Because I don't think Birdman had a whole lot of R&B. It's all rap for him, right? It's all rap. I, I can't remember a male R&B artist that was signed. I think they had... Um, they had a female that was that uh, used to sing with Rick James. What was her name? Used to sing with Rick James. Not Tina Marie. Tina Marie was signed to Cash Money. Really? I think so. Yeah. She can sing. Mm -hmm. I mean, people don't realize it. I mean, when I first heard her, I thought she was black. Yeah, of course. We and she do. was, and she's only like five two, and with a voice of a seven foot tall woman Crazy. that weighs four hundred pounds, really? but she could just flat out blow. Blow. One of the greatest R and B singers. Unfortunately, I'm afraid it's not going to get his recognition because of what transpired off the stage. No matter what you think about it, I, I believe you can separate the two. You can say you're appalled and, grow t and, and, and angered and saddened by the things that he did off. Of but there's no denying that R, R. Kelly, the way he could sing and the way he could write, 
I, that's nothing to debate. Nah, of Do you feel that he will get his proper recognition ever because of what transpired, or will he be forgotten? And like you said, Uncle, like what you said, we separating the person. We separating the, the man from the artist. Yes. We strictly talking about art. Yes. So we strictly talking about art. I believe that when they talk about the art, that they'll talk about R. Kelly because it's so many people in the world that's done this, so many other things. Right. You know, we totally against what the man did. Right. But as the artist, I believe that that they'll talk about him. You know, he's a he's a he's a he's a great with what he's done. Like I was just talking yesterday, like, I believe I could fly is one of the greatest songs in the world. Yeah. Like you could play that song at a graduation, you could play it in church, you could play it wedding. on a wedding. You could play it wherever, you right. know, and it's going to inspire you. And that's what music's supposed to do. It's supposed to inspire you and make you Lips. feel good. And he was he was good at making those type of songs. If I were to say, okay, give me your Mount Rushmore R&B singers. I mean, you can do this generation. You could do, I'm just talking about the greatest, four of the greatest R&B singers. Who you putting up there? Is Mike R&B or pop? Pop. Yeah, king of pop. Yeah. Okay, so R... Uh, the artist, I gotta say R. Kelly. Okay. Um, Usher. Okay. Wow. Okay, my list looking pretty good right now. My list looking good. I'm putting Chris Brown up there. Okay, okay. Uh, I got one more. R&B, like killing it. Jacquees. <laughs> okay, I ain't mad at you. I ain't mad at you. I'm sorry, Ron Isley. He left you off, bro. I, I would've done that. That's what I would've Kills done. Kills and Ron Isley go together. Yeah, okay. They a package. Right. And I had Maxwell. Okay, what about women? Okay, I gotta go. Is Whitney R and B or no? Oh uh, yeah. I gotta go. Whitney Houston, Beyonce. Okay. Damn, I'm doing good at this thing. Uh, Mary J. Ah, oh, bad. Look at it. I got that three for three. Um, uh, I'm gonna just go ahead and say R and B women. Uh huh. Cause Erica Badu not R and B, huh? Nah, she that's like soul. Neo soul, yeah. yeah. I'm gonna just say Faith. Okay, Faith Evans. Mary J. I mean, you got three. I'm gonna I'm put. What would, what would we consider Mariah? Pop. Pop. <laughs> yeah, pop. I think. Okay. Mariah Carey, pop. I mean, you, hey, this your list. I'm saying. Nah, throw Mariah on there. Nah, keep faith on there. Keep right. faith on my list. Okay. Mariah Carey, I don't know if she. But I feel good. I got, I got three. I mean, you can name three of my three, so I feel pretty good about this. Okay. Oh, Tory Lanez. Okay. You close with him? Yeah. What transpired? Tragic, sad. Definitely. Shouldn't have happened. Shouldn't. Have. Avoidable. Facts. Have you talked to him? You got still close? Yeah, we still close. I ain't, I ain't talked to Tory though. I tried to talk to him. Right. But I ain't talked to him. You know, I was with him through the periods of everything. You know, because right. we real friends. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's my brother. But uh. I ain't talked to him since, but of course, you know, I still holler at his people, make sure he's okay and right. things like that. How, how do how do you how do how do you avoid things of that nature? Because you look, you 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 king R and B. Yeah. I mean, you can easily. I mean, you go out, you're having a good time. Yeah. Maybe you have too much brown, or you have too much white. Whatever the case may be, yeah. you find yourself in a situation. How have you been able to avoid some of the pitfalls that we see so many of the other entertainers? Well, for me. You know, I think, you know, because we, none of us really know what happened that night right. with, with Meg and Tori. You know, but just speaking on myself, I keep my handlers around me and people that love me. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, like I got a lot of older people around me. Right. You know, so we all trip sometimes. Right. You know, I could have too much yak and get to tripping or I could right. just be talking too much and need right. to get out the room. So I have people around me that's going to make sure I'm always staying who I need to be. Right. You know, and they going to know how to eliminate the people in the room who don't need to be there. Right. You know, I got my aunt with me. I got Bright with me. You know, I got people that have been around me for forever. You know, it's not no new people. So right. they not around me just like, oh, that's Jacquees. I can't tell them nothing. They like, boy, I slap you in the head. My, like, what you on? Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? So. Yeah. This is what I tell a lot of athletes and people all the time. Have people around you to tell you what you need to know and not what you want to hear. Exactly. And it's not always easy. Nah. Because a lot of people that you have around you they get to go to the club and they get to experience things because of you. Exactly. Now, if they tell you the truth and you get upset, all of a sudden that ride stops. Mm -hmm. So do I really tell Queezy, he, 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 you know, he, 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 he jacking this off or do I just like let just go with the flow and keep this thing going? 
But you say you've surrounded yourself with people that sincerely have your best interest in mind. That's just like my mama. My mama got mad at me like last week. You feel me? <laughs> she got mad at me like, like, but you gotta think, like some people, mama are just like they'll get to a level where they feel like they done parenting. So the, right. so their kid might do something. They just not even concerned, or they might just not even be concerned because of what the child brings to the table. Right, yeah. See, my mama don't care about none of that. No, right. See, I did something last week, and my mama cut me off for like two days. Right. You know, and I'm like, dang, but she like, I can't, you know, my mama don't play that. Right. You feel me? So it's like, both, yeah. and that keep me grounded too, because of course, you know, when you real, you don't never want your mama to be upset with you. Because you Correct. know, we love our mama so much, yeah. your mama mad at you, you be, you can't even eat. Right. So I'm like that, right. for real, so. It just keep me grounded, man. It doesn't man. start when the child becomes grown. That's what my mom always say. She always <laughs> tell us, like, you are, you my baby. I mean, like, you ain't no little boy, but you my baby. So right. I be like, all right. And it just keep me grounded, man. That's how my whole team is. Like, from my DJ to my security to everybody around me, they never going to just let nothing slide. Right. It's always going to be like, bro, you tripping. Right. Or like, we, we finna deal. I don't care what you talking about. But you're also close. You're close to Thug, Gunner. And obviously, you're playing uh, uh, attention to what's going on in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Have you talked to those guys? Have you spoken to them? Well, keeping their heads up, keeping their heads up. Well, I didn't necessarily get to speak to them myself, right. but um, I, I knew how they was doing. You know, from people that I knew inside. Right. You know, and of course, I'm very tight with the family. Right. You know, I, I spoke to Thug Mom not too long ago. Mm -hmm. I speak to his sisters probably like every other day. Right. Dolly and Dora. We've been close since the beginning, because of course, you know, we all came through the door together with Rich Gang. Right. So we all was with Cash Money at the same time. We right. all came from nothing to something at the same time. So right. we, I feel like we'll keep our relationship forever. And of course, you know, every day I'm praying for the, you know, and I just keep my faith alive that, you know, he'll be right back out right. here. But you know, when, 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 um, when Gunner took the, took the deal, mm -hmm. people automatically assume mm -hmm. he snitched, he rolled, he got paper now. Mm -hmm. I mean, how, how, I mean, have your relationship changed because one is still in and the other is out? Well, I think for me, it was it was more so a thing with all of us, where it's like everybody kind of did their own thing. We, I, like m most times, I only seen them when it was all of us. Right. So it wasn't so a thing where it's like I'm talking to him, I'm talking to him, I'm talking to him, I'm talking to him. We hanging out separately. Right. It was always a we together. We together. It's all one family, you know. So we was always together. So right. one thing I always been good at, because since I've been on Cash Money, it's been so much controversy, you know, from the time I came in with the Birdman and Wayne thing to now right. this situation is like. I've always known how to stay in my position right. because I always knew if I stayed in my position, you never know what's going to happen up top. And right. I always never tried to be something I'm not. So I'm not going to dive into conversations I know I'm not supposed to be in. Right. You know what right. I'm saying? Like, right. I'm going a, I'm to a allow the world to work and I'm going to allow things to happen that's supposed to happen. You know, and once everything's come back together, I'll be right in my place because I never shift it size. Right, I, I right. stayed right here and just side, I just stay, waited for everything. Stay to, stay neutral. And I'm a little bruh. Right. That's how I've been the whole time. Okay. You know, in every situation I've always been Jacquees and I think people respect me so much because they know I got my own mind. Right. Like I could be in a room full of killers. You know, I could be in a room full of businessmen. I could be in a room full of anything. Right. But I, I'm going to have my own mind no matter what situation I'm in. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, period. Right. Do you believe Gunner can get back to the top of the music game? I believe God can work miracles. Right. Yeah. You also Qua uh, was close with the Migos. Oh, yeah. Quavo. Still, still close. Obviously, uh, and he said that once Takeoff lost his life tragically, uh, that the Migos are no more. That obviously something transpired between Quavo and Offset yeah. that caused them to go their separate ways. Mm -hmm. Have you spoken to Quavo since Takeoff, the passing, the tragic passing of, of, of uh, Takeoff? Yeah. And do you believe they can mend the fence and, become, and, and, and get back together again? Well, I spoke to Quavo. I spoke to Offset. You know, I hang with both of them. Right. Um, and, you know, of course, R.P. Takeoff, that was my brother, right. you know. We were like cousins or something, you know what I'm right. saying? But um, with them, they so close, man, you know, and the industry paints so many pictures that it's hard to believe what you read. Right. So for me, more so with them, you know, we grew up together for real, like before the industry. Like, right. we was outside together, like, mm -hmm. shooting dice, selling right. each other's shoes, like, you know, like literally friends. Like right. I had to learn how to call them boys by their stage names. Right. <laughs> like I had to like practice it. Right. Like offset, offset, offset. Cause I'm used to calling them Kiari. Right. You know, so from them doing whatever they doing, I believe it could be worked out. Cause once again, that's a family situation. Right. And you never want to be an outsider, even though that's my family. Commenting. On I don't want to step in from the outside and then they get back close and then leave me on the outside. Right, you know right, what I'm saying? Right. So it's like, I'm going to let them handle what they handle. I handle both of them separately. Right. I pray for them every day because it's, it's always better together. You right. know what I'm saying? But 
you know, I love them, and I believe one day they'll be back on that stage doing they doing what they love together, because that's how that's how we came in. I mean, I'm looking at you. You say you grew up on the east side. Uh, future was in your neighborhood. Yeah. So there's a lot of guys that, when you were growing up, and you was like running around, you probably seven, eight, nine years old. What did you want to be? I wanted to be a singer. That's what you want. No sports. I want to sing. I play sports. I got a highlight on YouTube. What? Yeah, I'm five. <laughs> I had the Florida Gators coach out there at my high school already. When I was in 10th grade, he was already out there looking at me. You was about that? I was hard. <laughs> then you know what really made me feel good? I found out uh, later on who uh, Jacquez Rogers was. Remember Jacquez yeah, Rogers? We, that yeah. He about my height. Right. So I was like, oh, it's, I can do it for real. Right. So I was taking that serious, but the reason I stopped playing football was uh, my coach left the school. And once my coach left the school, one of our players died. It was just a lot going on. Right. So I was like, I got to do what I know I'm great at. Like, right. I'm good at football. But I'm great at singing. Right. So let me go ahead and stop playing with y'all. So from the time you, yeah, you football is thing. So was football more because football is more like a friend thing? Mm -hmm. Of a homeboy play, oh man, you go to practice? Yeah, let's go to practice. Let's go do this and do that. Singing is, a, is something, I mean, especially like, oh, you're not in a group. Right. That's a lonely business. Mm -hmm. It's all you by yourself all the time trying to get better. I mean, for me, sports, it was cool because I had a best friend, my boy Devin. He was the man, and we was the one and two back. Right. I knew he was better than me, right. but I still like being with Devin because it's like he 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 run this way, I'm gonna do that one. Right. You feel me? We two different type of backs. Right. So for me, it was like okay, I know Devin better than me in football. Right. He the man in football. Right. Like, I'm the I'm the man in football, but singing, I'm just the man. It was easy to it, it was just easy to choose. Running around the neighborhood, everybody rallied around me because I was good in football too. Like right. we like we used to play two hand touch. Right. And I could juke everybody. That's right. what really made me want to play middle school ball. Because, right. of course, like anybody else in the hood, your daddy going to make you play sports. Right. So I slick hated football at right. first because I was forced to play. Right. But once I got good in the neighborhood, I'm like, okay, this is what I like to do. But on the other hand, my mama was super down with the music. Right. Taking me to schools to perform and doing different things. So I was just like, music more so fits me and I'm super good at it. And I had my whole community really banking on me. Right. Really, literally, like I used to go into beauty salons. The OG will be with me, like, quit saying something. Like, if me and you walking down the street, you're like, man, did my nephew hit it? And I just hit it. <laughs> and then they just, that's just how it used to be. Right. You know, so I knew, like, this is my real mm -hmm. calling, you know? You say you grew up, uh, your first job was sweeping up at the barbershop. Yeah. You sing out in front of Kroger. Yeah. So basically, I mean, you're like, okay, you're in front of Kroger. I mean, people like, young man, you can really sing. You, yeah. can, you, should, you should, like, do something with this. Well, it was a guy. I was out there singing one day. Because this is back when the payphones used to be outside the grocery store and they had the benches out there and stuff. Right. And I remember me and all my partners, we would stand out there on the bench or something. Then I might just hit it. You know what I'm saying? I remember I'm out there hitting it one day just singing. A guy named Exquisite come up to me. And he like, man, you can sing. Like, you hard. Like, he's like, man, I'm finna put you with somebody. This guy named Dex, R.P. Dex Lee. He was my first manager. He passed away, though. So Exquisite was like, man, I'm gonna put you with him. I'm in the eighth grade. So I'm like, bet. At the time, I'm singing with my homeboy. His name was Joe. Mm -hmm. Joe was super hard in the hood. Like, Joe. He was writing all the music, but he could sing. You right. know what I'm saying? He was my age, too. So I'm like, bet, I'm going to come to the studio and bring my boy Joe. So now I got an opportunity to go to the studio. So mm -hmm. now I'm, I'm, I'm about to go to the studio. I remember, uh, I think one of my older cousins took me on my sister. But I remember, no, Dex took me, Dex Lee. Mm -hmm. I remember we went and tried to pick up one of my homeboys, because now that I know I'm going to the studio, I'm trying to put my homeboys from school on. Right. I'm like, bro, come to the studio. I'm going to let you rap on my song. Because we had been wrote the song. We're like, we're going to go record it. We go to record the song. Basically, my partner who I tried to put on the song, he ended up choking, but me and Joe ended up killing it. We ended up making a three-song demo, and that three-song demo took me from Kroger to Cross Atlanta. You know, right. it took me from Kroger to Block NT. I was signed to Bad Boy South at first. Mm -hmm. When I first came in at 15, I went from Bad Boy South to Think It's a Game Entertainment. Right. You know, from Think It's a Game Entertainment, I went to Cash Money. So just from singing in front of Kroger, you know, it took me... That's where I am today. But if I want to never believe in myself and got out there and just singing, and if my neighborhood wouldn't have never pushed me to that point, I probably would have never been here. And then the start is the finish, huh? It's the finish. So many other guys were doing so many other things. That's right. why I salute everybody from the barbershop because that was like the safe place. You know right. how the barbershop used to be. It's like everybody would protect you. Oh, absolutely. Like they wouldn't let you get into nothing. Like if they seen guys going left, they'll make sure you go right. Yeah, yeah the and community. That's, that's how my whole life was. That was the village. And I and I, I spoke to this dealing talk about job not to get too far off cut. Mm -hmm. But you know when in, in the community, young fella was Kurt, son don't curse. You yeah. too young to curse. Exactly. Son don't smoke no cigarette. Why you smoking cigarettes? You too young. Yeah. Son, why you stealing that? I'm gonna tell you, now go home and tell your mom. It was always we were policing each other. Exactly. But I think somehow along the way, job, I mean, parents started becoming try to become friends. Mm -hmm. 
My grandparents weren't trying to be no friend. Mm -hmm. The dynamic won't ever change. You're the child, I'm the adult. We're going to stay in that relationship role. Right. I think it's become very, very hard to be a parent yeah. when you're trying to be a friend. And yeah. what we had were adults were adulting, doing adult things, and kids stayed in their place. Right. Your mom was in the military. Yeah. Damn, you got everything on me. <laughs> <laughs> was she strict? Nah. She didn't say, hey, boy, make sure that bowl, make sure that bed. See, I got two sisters. Okay. So they did everything? They older than you? I got a big sister, Rizzy, and I got my little sister, Miracle. Okay. So my mama was one of them. You know, you got to think, like, she slick. Like, she slick raises by herself a little bit. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? It was slick, just her. Like, you know what I'm saying? But she got married in 2003. Of course, my pops was there before that. But it was kind of just her. But mm -hmm. my sisters, they was good girls. Like, I ain't have to worry about my sisters running across the street to the boy house. Right. Doing all that. So my mama, we had so much respect for her because of what, how much she was doing. We didn't even want to do nothing. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, even when I started trying to do stuff in high school and different stuff like that, she just used to hit me in my chest and they just used to make me just, like, not want to do nothing. <laughs> like, you know, I ain't, I ain't, she ain't used to have to whoop me. She just could, like, catch me off guard. Just boom, in my chest and that. It used to make me feel so bad. <laughs> and I just, you know what I'm saying? It used to work, though. You know, but my mama... I never just wanted to, we, we never wanted to do nothing out of the line. Nah, never. That, that, that was the thing. And then she used to reward us, like, she was like, man, so y'all gonna make A's and B's, I'll buy you some shoes. Like, right. get you something. You're like, I'll get you something. You know, I used to want all the Jordans. Right. So I'm in school trying to get A's and B's for real. I had never made a C to, like, I had never got a C to, like, my, like, probably, like, my senior year. Wow. Real time, I was A, B, on the road the whole way up. And I was, uh, I graduated top 10% of my class with the cords on my neck and all that. I could have went to any college. I was smart. Right. I was supposed to be the valedictorian. But see, the, my 11th grade year, I ended up doing online classes, trying to do music, right. and then something happened where I, I didn't do one class, and it brought my GPA from like a 3.9 to like a 3.4. You know what I'm saying? Right. So you told your teachers and your mom. Was your mom disappointed when you told her? Because as you said, you're, you're a great student. Yeah. You, you told your mom, said, Mom, I, I, the college thing ain't for me. I'm going to pursue, I'm going to pursue this dream of mine. Nah, she knew I wasn't going to college. Like, my mama knew, like, if I would have went, it would have been my choice. But see, my mama knew I'm one of them kids, like, if I'm thinking it, I can make it happen. Because I had made so much happen in high school. Right. Like, I was already on the radio in high school. I had a show called The Teen Report. It was on V103. So every Saturday, I would go to the radio station, and I would report everything that's going on in every high school. So if y'all needed new computers, if y'all ceilings was messed up, if y'all don't like the cafeteria food, whatever y'all want, I, I get everything y'all want, and I go on the radio Saturday and be like, man, McNair need new ceilings. You know, Towers High School, we need new computers. Da -da 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 -da. We did it. I was the child that... I mean, I was a student that used to go to the to the board for the board meetings, right. you know, for the school. Like right. I was a good kid, right, all the way up. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it seems to me you put all of your eggs in one basket, this music basket. Didn't have a plan B, no C, no D, A. I, this gotta work. I was just talking to my uncle about that. He just reminded me about that today. I was like. I didn't have a plan B because I wanted to focus so much on plan A. I, I, I literally tried to X jobs out. I went and got a tattoo on my neck when I was 13. Because I remember they were saying, like, if you get tattoos on your neck, you can't get a job. So I was instantly trying to X myself out of the job right. category. I'm like... You ain't do that tattoo, did you? That, that one on your leg. Nah. You know? <laughs> nah. <laughs> man, man, come on. Man, I ain't gonna lie, Queen. I, I, you, you, you did that one. Nah. Ain't no way. Nah. Ain't no way no artist. Ain't no way he gonna put his name on that one. Nah. Hey, hold on. Oh. <laughs> then, then I went back at 14 and tatted my hands. I remember my, I remember my reading team was like, Jacquees, why did you do that? And what'd you say? I was like, man, I what got What did your mom say? My mama, honestly, honestly, when I got my neck tat, she didn't know I was going. But I always had dreads, so I got it in a spot on my neck where... If she couldn't see her. Right. If I wore a ponytail, she could see it. If I let the dreads down, she couldn't see it. Right. But the hands, I went and got fear God on my hands. Uh, you probably gonna be able to read it now. So, uh, but yeah. I, had, I had fear God on my hands. But she didn't... I don't even know if she noticed that that fast. Right. Because it was like... I was I was kind of moving by then. I'm doing shows. I'm probably getting like $500 a show. Right. My boy Bright used to pay me to come to the teen club. You know, okay. he used to call me and be like, Quick, come up here. It's lit. He was like, cause I used to, you know, I, everybody knew me. And this is what we trying to make me go to the next thing. He like, man, come up here. I'm gonna give you five hundred dollars. Just do some of your songs. I used to pull up for that five hundred, cause at the time five hundred was a lot. Yeah, for yeah. sure. I'm used to shoot one, bet one, shoot two, bet three. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So if they talking about they got five hundred, I'm going. So this whole hustle, my mom, she was just and everybody. Died. Like I say, they was just always with it. The whole 
everybody. Right. It was always plan A. They knew like we're gonna make sure Jacquees make it, like, period. Right. You had a you had an aunt saying with Shirley Caesar. Yeah. What was that experience? I mean, did you talk, did you talk to her? You like and, and did she give you like, son, you can make it. You can you you really good. Well, I was young. You gotta think, when my auntie that was doing that with Shirley Caesar them, I was literally a child. See, right. my grandmama big on gospel to church and yes, everything, yes. you know, so I was around a, another gospel singer. Her name was Dottie Peoples. Mm -hmm. So I used to be at the radio station with Dottie Peoples. I used to be everywhere with Dottie Peoples. They probably be with Shirley Caesar. I'm with Dottie Peoples. Right. So I never got a chance to holler at them as an adult, not right. even as a teenager. I right. never talked to Dottie since I was a kid. You know, right. I'm pretty sure she see me now like, dang, that's Kui. Right. Because, of course, they called me Jacquees. Nobody was calling me Jacquees back then. Right. It was just Kui. Kui. You know, so right. I know she see Jacquees now and put the face with the name in my family. I know she proud of me, but... Right. You know, just having that background, I feel like a lot of people prayed for me, you know, coming from that church background. I feel like I'm just standing on all their shoulders and all their prayers. Talent, you say you've been performing talent shows probably since you was five or six year, years of age. Did you ever get nervous? Mm, I always had butterflies. I don't, you know what's so funny? I don't get them no more, though. Really? Not really. Like, these past couple shows I've been doing, I ain't been having no butterflies, probably because my set only been 15, 20 minutes. So. Right. It been so quick and easy, I ain't been having butterflies. But starting off in the beginning, I used to always have butterflies. I knew I would do my thing, right? but I was just real jittery. I used to get off the stage every night and ask Bright. I used to be like, how I do? Like, what you think about the show? Right. I still do that, because I don't think I'm perfect. I always know there's ways to get better. I always ask somebody to record me or something like that so I can come off and, and study it. myself, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? But You more, still do that? I still do it. Bright still record the show every night. I still get off, look at the videos, make sure like I need to do this better. I don't like that, because I'm always trying to get better. Your first talent show, they said uh, you did Michael Jackson, had to throw in everything. Yep. You, you So I, I, I'm assuming that you are a huge Michael Jackson fan. Major Michael Jackson fan. Like, I was so to the point Michael Jackson fan, I tried to get a Jerry Curl. That's the only reason I had the Afro wig. My mama right. wouldn't let me get the Jerry Curl. <laughs> we went all the way to the salon, and right. we got down there, and she's like, you sure you want to get a Jerry Curl? I'm like, yeah, I'm nine years old. I'm like, yes, I want it. She's like, I oh, don't know. She, you know, she, she, she wasn't gonna let me go that far. Right. So she let him twist my hair up in a little twist or whatever right. like that. And then she was like, just put, we're gonna go to the beauty supply and just get the little afro and just do that. Right. She was like, it's gonna work because we're gonna have the outfit. Like the outfit gonna make her, and she's showing me pictures to make me feel it. Right. Trying to get me right. out of the thriller mode right. back into the child mic. Right. Because I'm past that at this point. Right. But I ended up doing that and we, it ended up working. Like I said, my mama, man, she's been my biggest supporter from day one. How hard is it? Because we've seen a lot of child stars be great child stars, but don't transition into adult stars. Yes. And we see some that just start out and they just as adults. Uh, so was it hard? Because I look at like Bow Wow, Chris Brown, Justin Bieber, Michael Jackson. You look at Beyonce, how she was able to transition and she, I mean, she's a, a, a wildfire now. Right. How hard was it for you? Because you had this enormous talent as a child right. and to, to harness that and to transition into becoming an adult star. Well, what I did was, I used to always try to time everything. Okay. So even when I started getting tattoos, I slowed down a little bit because I'm like, I'm going to have to transition. Right. Like, I don't want to do all this stuff as a kid. Then when I turn 18, 19, 21, yes. I ain't got nothing to do. So I'm also like, okay, I ain't going to cuss in my music yet. I'm like, I ain't going to just curse in my music. Right. I'm like, I'm going to wait till I turn 18 so that way they see the difference. You know, I'm going to still talk about, you know, what I'm gonna talk about, right. you know what I'm saying? But I'm gonna just bleep the words out. So right. I would record a song, but I used to be like, bleep the words out. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't wanna cut shit, because I want them to see the transition. Right. And I also feel like a big part of my transition was where I'm from. Mm -hmm. Like, we all went from kids to that at right. the same time, you know? So it wasn't like I, I moved out my neighborhood, came back a different person. I got the transition right with them. Like, you know how the neighborhood go. You have to have some of your friends gonna start going with all the females, some of your friends gonna start smoking. Some of your friends gonna start doing this, getting in trouble, some, you know what I'm saying? Right. So I was there for the whole thing. And with that, I was able to transition to music. I was able to go from like, okay, we lovey-dovey as kids to like, okay, now we stepping in these parties in high school, like we doing this stuff. My swag changing with it. It was, right. just, a, it was just a good transaction. It wasn't corny. Right. Like it wasn't like, oh, Jacquees was doing that when he young and now he's doing all this. Mm -hmm. It was always merging, like, oh, you growing up. Right. You going, I can tell you 17 from 16. I can right. tell you 18 from 17 just gradually growing with my fans and, and just trying to trying hard as I can to just really show them who I really am, right. you know, without showing them too much. Did you experience any jealousy? Because obviously you, you, they, they see the enormous talent mm -hmm. um, 
Obviously, you're going to be going places that some of them are not going to go. And maybe some didn't choose to go. Was there any jealousy, any resentment? Because I obviously everybody knows who you are in school. Uh, jealousy? I don't think so. Like, I ain't have a hard time. It was easy. Like, I wasn't a kid that, you know. You were a kid easy to like, huh? Yeah, I was easy to like. But you got to think, like, if you didn't like me, you automatically a hater. Because it was like, because <laughs> it was like, how you don't like Queen? Right. Like, Queen cool. Right. Like, what's up with you? Like, how right. you don't like Queen? Right. He singing, little bro right. singing, like, he be fresh. Right. He ain't bothering nobody. Little bro don't need smoke. Like, he's trying to, like, he be chilling. Like, he like, try to be the end crowd. He just do Little bro thing. be chilling. Right. Man, anybody that didn't like me, it was always because of a female. Period. You was popular with the girls? Oh, man. Yeah, because you can say, yeah, man, they get all the girls. That's still, that's still to this day. But I wasn't even singing to get the girls. What the hell you would get them? I was, come on. Oh, you, 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 you dressed in the night. <laughs> you, so you been dressing for a minute. This ain't new. Oh, nah. Uh. This ain't because you an R&B singer. This ain't because you on stage. You been with the rags. You been with the threads for a minute. I huh? wasn't best dressed in high school. Did you? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I got a picture on the table in the cafeteria and they called it out on the table. Ah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> hey, them see you some like that, bro. I'm telling you. And I would talk five, man. Come on. Man. So, today, everybody talks about independence. Man, you need to own this and you need to own that. And you say, no, nah, I want to be with a label. I, I, that's, that's what I... What is it about being with a label versus being independent? I think being with a label versus being independent is the machine. And when right. I say the machine, it's the money. Right. Like, when you with these people, they're going to support you. When you're independent, you got to support yourself. yourself. Right. So I think that's, that's the biggest thing, you know? I'm surprised that you said that because it seems to me in talking to you, you've always believed in yourself. Always did. And this is really the first time that you said, okay, that support mechanism. Uh-huh. And, you know, believing in, and all of a sudden, I don't see the same, that the belief that you had in yourself from, say, from the time you started doing this, because like you said, you got the tattoo, because I'm gonna show y'all, I can do something even though I got this tattoo, and you ain't got your hands tatted. And you, like, you know what, nah, football, yeah, I, I'm gonna do my thing, because this, this ain't where it's at. Am I, am I off base, am I missing something here? What you mean, like, like? Because, I, I, see, when you said, okay, the oh, machine. So you saying like, you saying like, okay, Kui, I see you believing in yourself, but now you get to the point where you feel like you need the machine. Right. So right. I don't, at this level I'm at now, I'm always need a machine to help, of course, but I'm at a level where I am now. I got so many fans, and I built it up so hard, of course, with the help of the machine and different right. things like that. I honestly do feel like I could have a career independently. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because right. I honestly feel like I could have had a career independently before the machine if I had the knowledge. Right. See, we didn't have the knowledge. Right. You know, we was just out the hood trying to make it. Right. Like, we weren't trying to hear nothing. Right. Like, you bring an opportunity our way, for the most part, we're going to take it because right. we're just trying to get on yeah. the screen because we know once we get here, we can take it further. Right. So I know that, you know, a couple years from now, you probably will see me independent. You right. know, I got my own label right now. Right. You know, so I know that I'll be able to one day actually work like the machine, you right. know? So as of right now, you're happy with the decision that you made that I'm with, I'm with the machine, I'm good with that, but hey... I'm gathering knowledge about how this thing actually works. And so one day there may be a time where you see, hey, he's, uh, he's doing his own thing. Right. It might be a time because I feel like that's just a part of growth. Right. Like, I feel like if you with somebody for so long and you got love for them and y'all been doing your thing for so long, it's going to be a certain time where you're going to be like, man, it's time for you to spread your wings. Like, right. I'm ready to see you go do something greater. And I just feel like that's the evolution of life, period. Damn, that must be what's happening in my relationship. They say it's time. <laughs> we, we done been against you like time to speak. Nah, nah, I don't want to go. <laughs> How do you know? <laughs> no, but let me ask you this. Cash Money, they known for rappers. Obviously, you know, they do what they do. They got Lil Wayne, yeah. and uh, they had Lil Wayne. I don't think he's there anymore. Uh, Nicki Minaj and Drake, and you, R&B. Yeah. And you, you mentioned that they had uh, uh, Tina Marie. Why why not go to an R&B label if there is such a thing? You know why? Uh, because when I was coming up, people used to try to change me. Right. You know, I was the young boy with the braces, with the dreads, right. white teeth. I might be sagging a little bit. Yeah. You know, I would just represent where I was from. The R&B singers don't have no braces, though. 
and they ain't got no dreads. Nah, and they, and they, they ain't sagging their pants yeah, yeah. and they ain't doing that. You know, they normally, they would dread, they would, they would, they would Black glasses. Yeah, sure. I wasn't on that then. Right. So you couldn't get me to throw on no black glasses. Like, right. like, like with no black leather jacket and the black pants right. and the black. I wasn't doing it. Right. I'm like, what a fitted cap at, the white tee, the bandana, the. Right. I was I, I went on that, so I felt like I used to tell people I'm like, man, the only people I can sign to is Cash Money, right? Because I'm like, they're not gonna try to change me. I'm gonna be able to come right in there and be myself, right? And that's really why I went, because I'm like, I'm not finna go to somebody and they start trying to tell me what to do. Right. Like, you need to dress like this or you need to do that. Birdman gave me full creative control, right? So as soon as he did, I'm like, oh, so ain't nothing changing, right? You know, so I I, I love that about Cash Money. Is that what makes Birdman so successful? He's the CEO of uh, Cash Money, obviously, and he's built this multi, multi, multi million dollar entity. Is that is because he allows his artists to have control and he just lets them be like, okay, hey, you came to me, let me help you be the best you you can possibly be. Yeah, I think I think the biggest thing about Birdman and Cash Money and Slim is that when you in a drought or like when the wave ain't even up yet, they gonna keep going with you. Versus another level, we're gonna be like, okay, what's the album? What's the single? Okay, we're gonna put the budget on this single and that's your album single. You know, duh, duh. we do groundwork. You know, like we do real groundwork. Like Stunner will get out there with you, like, okay, you trying to work on a mixtape? Okay, let's do the mixtape. Okay, let's do this. Okay, let's put it over here. That ain't got nothing to do with the label. Right. This just stuff to get you hot. Right. That's the difference in being with Cash Money. Like, we gonna put in the real work over here versus to where it's like you gonna go in there and start recording your first album and you're gonna put your single out. Over here is like, you ain't hot yet. Let's try to like, right. let's try to get it all the way hot. So when we come out for real, it, it, it right. go up through the, it go up through there. So you get a lot of time, and it's like being with Cash Money, you get like so many bonuses. Like you might be hanging around Bird one day and just meet so many other people, all free game. They ain't right. charge you nothing for it because you met them with, with him. Right. I met so many people with Bird, you know, and formed real relationships with them where where it was never about money, or nothing like that. So it just it's a lot of pluses that come with being with Cash Money right. for sure. But obviously there's been some, I mean, you've heard uh, he doesn't pay his artists and this and that. Obviously you haven't experienced any of that or you still wouldn't be there. Of course. I mean, I feel good. You know what I'm saying? Like, I never had a problem with my money with Bird. I never had a problem with, with Cash Money, period. You know what I'm saying? Only thing I want Cash Money to do is, you know, just keep pushing the gas on the, on the radio. Right. That's it. But, um, yeah, I never had a problem, you know. And when I do hear about other people's problems, I be knowing, like, man, it's business. And I be like, man, business go wrong in so many other areas. You right. know what I'm saying? So I try to keep my business so on point to the point where I ain't even got to think about, like, oh, he ain't getting paid. As long as I'm getting what I need to get, right. I'm ain't cool. Like, I want everybody to get what they got to right. get, but it really ain't got nothing to do with me. Like, right. I'm, I'm, I'm getting mine. Right. I hope you get yours. Lil Wayne, uh, his, he's been, I mean, you've heard a lot of people say that he's the GOAT rapper now. Uh, he, he's, he's unbelievable. I mean, the way he can put words together and, and words that you wouldn't think and, and phrases and, and make them like, I mean, bling, bling, that was him. Yeah. And when we, everybody, they, you, they had the other, the other side saying bling, bling. <laughs> yeah, we said bling, bling. The other side started saying bling, bling. That's up. Is that why, it, I mean, the dreads, the tattoos, has he been that big of an influence on you? Oh, yeah, Wayne has been a major influence on me. I had a cash money chain when I was eight years old. I right. bought it from the beauty supply store. I had the foil in my mouth. Oh, yeah, hold up. You got a, 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 a chain from beautiful? Yeah, cash money record chain. I had one before I, when I was eight. Okay. I've, I've been had it, the right. cash money chain. Uh, foil in my mouth, bandanas, <laughs> braids. I had the braids when Wayne had the braids. When Wayne went to dreads, I had the dreads. He was he was big on our culture, you know. Yeah. Being where I'm from, like everybody loved Wayne, and then I I had a I had a real attachment to Wayne too, cause he was the smallest one. Right. And when I was running outside with all my dogs, I was the smallest right. one. So it was instantly like, I'm like Wayne. They used to call me that in football too. They used to be like, uh, my football name was Wheezy. You know, how right. everybody have yeah. have nicknames. Right. I, I was Wheezy. Right. And I carried it the whole time. But of course, I never wanted to be like him as a man. But as a child, right. you know, he was somebody that I idolized. Right. I'm looking at this situation and I'm looking at all the artists that you've been with, T.I., you, you've collabed with, T.I., mm -hmm. Chris Brown, Neo, City Girls, Lotto, Summer Walker, Lil Baby, Future, 2 Chainz, 21 Savage. That's crazy. Soul, music, Soul Child, Escape, Donnell Jones. Bruh, who haven't you collabed with that you would love to collab with? I would love to collab with Wayne, mm -hmm. Nicki, okay. Drake, okay. Beyonce, her, Jay-Z, um, Kendrick. Well, you really put stars, man. 
Oh yeah, they. I'm gonna get that. You gonna get that? You gonna help me, huh? <laughs> you gonna put in that word? Oh, hey, for sure. <laughs> yeah. I ain't got no problem with that. <laughs> yeah. Hey, if I ever run across him, I'm gonna say, hey, you know my boy, man. He been trying to do some work with y'all. He like that too, for real though. Oh, that's gonna work. Nah, that's gonna work. That's gonna work. You put that last part out. He yeah. like that for real. Oh, he like that for sure. For sure. <laughs> so, when you go into the studio with these, uh, with these, these people, uh, are you nervous? Nervous? Yeah. Nah, I'm a real one. Like, like I'm a real man. Like, I'm a real human being. Right. Like, I'm not nervous. Like, now, nah. do I get excited still? Yeah. Like, I might be in there with my favorite artist. My heart might be like, damn, you man. Get butter, you, you, let me ask you a question. You get butterflies when you go in there? Because you say you don't get butterflies going on stage no more. Nah, no butterflies. But see, it's like I could walk in a room with somebody I done been wanting to meet. It's like... I, I done been around so many people now. Right. And then I'm like, I'm a grown man now. So it's right. like, it's different. Like, you know, like, man... It's different. You don't fan out? I be fanned out sometimes. I play it cool, though. Nah. They don't know it, but I be fanned out. Nah, last time I was probably feeling real good like that. When I met somebody, was probably when I uh, when I met Brun. I know it's your boy. Yeah, that is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, yeah. Got, I got to meet Brun uh, when I saw the national anthem. Right. You know, I was already talking to Brun in the DMs. So, like, man, Brun, you know you're my favorite player, Brun. Right. I've been talking to Brun like, a couple years now. I sent him a picture of me like in fifth grade when I had the Cleveland jersey right. on. He like, now nah, that's crazy. Da, 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 right. But when I got to meet him in person, it was just cool. You know, after I did it, brush saluted me. Seen him at a couple shows, repost what I do. But that's probably the last time I've been like, bruh. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, that was last time. You and Future Crew, y'all grew up in the same neighborhood, right? Yeah, he from the six, I'm from the six. Okay, and uh, he produced. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. yeah. Did you, I mean, when you guys are growing up, did y'all like, man, we gonna, hey, man, you know what? You gonna do your thing, you gonna do my, I'm gonna do my thing, and one day, man, we gonna link back up. All the, did you, did it, did that thought ever cross your mind when y'all seven, eight, nine, ten years of age? Nah, cause you gotta think, I grew up with 21 Savage too. Damn. Yeah, like. That neighborhood was on fire. What? The East Side was on fire. See, Future one, Future was down there on the other side. Like, Future, I didn't, I didn't meet Future till I got with Block NT, like, okay. probably like 16 or something like okay. that. But as far as 21 and Offset and different right. like that, we was I really came up with them. But as far as being where we from, I think it had a lot to do with Future One to be a part of it because he knows where I come from and he knows the level I'm trying to get to and he right. also knows how talented I am. Right. And it make me feel good that he actually acknowledges that talent because a lot of times you will see a lot of people try to play on my talent, right. play on my top a little bit, but you'll have a person who they acknowledge as the biggest in the game come down and reach his hand to me and put some light on, on me. That's right. why I salute Future so much. And I know it's, it's because of my work ethic and where I'm from and how solid I've kept it in the game. Mm -hmm. I know that's why he wanted to attach himself to me because you gotta understand the only other artist that he's executive produced the album for was Kanye West. Wow. So just that lineup right there, when, when you talk about the albums that Future executive produced, it's gonna be Kanye West and Jacquees. That's gonna look amazing. Yeah. So I be thinking bigger. I be thinking like, man, he know that. He know how that's gonna look for me. Mm -hmm. So it make me have an extended love for him. Like, I know what you're trying to do for me on the back end. Right. And I appreciate that. Right. How important is it for young artists coming up in the game to have mentors? I think it's very important for young artists to have mentors. I could really say a couple of my mentors have been Chris Brown. Mm -hmm. You know, I used to live with Chris Brown when I was 18, fresh out of high school. He used to always tell me things not to do. Right. You know, he used to always tell me about everything he experienced and everything that I shouldn't do. Right. Um, Donnell Jones okay. was, was definitely one. You know, Donnell Jones went through a lot in the industry, you know, had a lot of success. You know, a couple parts where he felt like he could have, you know, done more. And he always, you know, let me know what to do. Trey Songs right. talked to me about a lot of stuff. You know, I got a, I got a couple guys that I look to when I'm having an issue and I right. need somebody to talk to like right. that. I call them, and uh, mm -hmm. not just even the artists. Like it's a lot of OGs right. that, that you know did a lot for me. Like my boy Clay. You know, we praying for Clay right now. He did a lot for me. Like a lot of people that was just in Atlanta. You know, that I get to pick up my phone and call and be like, man, I, I'm feeling like this, and they'll tell me like, man, don't don't do that. Like this is what you should really be doing. Focus on this. Like put all your energy on this. Like think about the good things. Don't think about the negative. Right. Think about the positive. You have a song with August, yeah. and uh, you know we know about him with the entanglement. Yeah. You ain't been in no entanglements, have you? God nah. damn it. Nah, you took you too long to that man. Nah. You were supposed to say off the rip. No. I'm saying, because I had to figure out what it was. Entanglement is just like when you tangle up and like. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, you know what entanglement was. Yeah, you see, you know what I'm saying. I ain't been in like that. Huh? God I dang, like I was that. hoping you just robbed the wrist and say, nah, I ain't been in that. I ain't like been that. in that like that. You Same paused way. that thing and started looking up to the starlight. Oh, let me tell you. I thought entanglement was like, you don't snatch some, like, I don't, I don't know. I ain't, I don't know. I ain't never been in that. See, you just try to kind of different definition. The <laughs> we, we wiggle out of that thing. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I don't know why I, that ain't sounding good over nah, here from I, what. I ain't been in that. I ain't been in that. 
public, uh, you were in a public relationship. Yeah. Is that something you do again, or you try? Oh, you prefer to keep? Babe, hey, I, I got you, but I'm a firm believer. People can't f up what they don't know. Facts. I think, like with me, I probably, I probably more so would be like, let's keep it G with each other until it's all the way one thousand, and then you know, if they see us, they see us. Right. But if you want to put me out there, do it, cause I ain't gonna stop you from expressing yourself about how you feel about me. If you want to show everybody how much you love me, do it. You know what I'm saying? But you gotta know what come with it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You gotta know what come with it. It might be some girls that might be lying and might hit you up and say I did this and that and that and that. But yeah, but lying. if you did that and that before you got with them or her, it don't matter. But still, but still, it still hurt a little bit. Yeah, it hurt. It hurt, hurt a little bit. It hurt a little bit. Cause they be bit. dragging, they be dragging up old stuff. You know, stirring up old ish still stink. Oh, you know that. It stank, it stank more. <laughs> yeah. It stank worse. Yeah. But it's like, I don't know. I, that's, that's a tricky one. But you know, it's hard to tell a woman not to show people how much how much she loves you. You know what I'm saying? Um, let me ask, what, what type of person are you? What, what type of relationship person are you? Are you a, you a gift giver? Or are you a like, uh, uh, you know, hey, baby, hey, pack the bags. We off to the Bahamas. Or we off to Mexico. Or we off to Paris. Me, I'm more so like, I'm going to get you some. But I do like to go on trips, but I'm not a good trip planner. I ain't, see? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, you set it up and I'll pay for it. Is that a Southern thing? Probably so. Get a girl that I'm you terrible. Know. Yeah, I ain't. You know what? I, I, I try ain't. to look for spots. I don't can't find it. She goes search the spot, find a better spot for the same price and cheaper. I'm like, I ain't. You know what? I this is, this gonna be this gonna be bad. Okay. I'm about to be 55. Damn, I've never built an airline ticket. Never. Never. Someone's like, no, download Delta out. Man, I can't do it. Man, I'll be the man, I'll be in Africa somewhere. I'm trying to go to Atlanta, I'm in Africa. <laughs> I just started booking my flights. Man, I just, this year. Did you? I mean, I don't book my flights, but yeah, like, see, I don't feel bad now. I got a lot of little diamond points on my stuff, so I get a couple credits. So right. I have to book it from my app. So sometimes they'll tell me, like, who you gotta book it? It made me feel good too. I feel like, like, damn, I'm booking my own stuff. I don't need nobody. Mm -mm. I, I, already, I already know I'm gonna be able to pay like 50 grand for a one-way <laughs> ticket somewhere. So I better leave that alone. I better let somebody that do that. Yeah. <laughs> so let me ask you this. If you're in a relationship and you buy some gifts, you expect the gifts back? Mm, in a relationship? Yeah. No. I don't expect stuff back with nobody. Cause See? I, I never been that. I, I I never been like, I don't take no gift back either. Yeah, it's like when I get something, I'll be so happy, but I don't get stuff expecting something back because I know what position I'm in. Has somebody taken a gift back from you? Of course. Why they do that though? You got mad at me. Yeah, I'm saying, but why? I'm saying, I mean, you I thought you gave me the gift. I thought you wanted to, me to have it. You can't get mad now and say, well, I don't want you to have it. I, I used to know, it was this one person, they used to give me stuff, but I know they used to only give me stuff to hold it over my head. See. So I stopped accepting it, because I'm like, oh, you trying to give me this, then you trying to, you give me the gift and want to pull back up, take it, but you're only giving it to me so you have something over me. It's like, keep your gift, beat it. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. I, I own, but uh, I don't like people like that in general. It's just not just the opposite sex. It's not. I don't like people to do things for you just so they can hold it over your head. Hey, bro, you remember I did that? Mm -hmm. They looking for something. Yeah. That 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 be the people that's looking for something way bigger up at you. You right. know what I'm saying? You gotta watch people like that. Like, you might have friends, they might buy you some shoes, but then you know you got something major going on that you can't bring everybody to. Right. Hey man, remember I got you some shoes, man. Remember I did. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. That's all you gotta hit them with. Man, I appreciate it, but we can't even, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you can't even take this one. Mm -mm. So me, um purchases. Mm -hmm. You made it. Man, I got some money. What's the first thing you bought? First thing I bought, I bought a Rolly. Okay. I mean, I bought a Rolly. I cashed out everything I had. I thought I was broke. <laughs> I remember everybody, we was in Jury Unlimited. Everybody looking at it like it's just amazing. Everybody just looking at my you wife. Had ice, you had to ice it out, did you? you nah, had, I, had I, just, I, had, I just had the diamond bezel, bezel okay. but I had the big bezel. Okay. I took the little bezel, I'll put the big one on it. That's right. when it was all about the bezel, but right. we were country. We ain't right. on that. You feel me? <laughs> right. so, I remember I went back to the house, I found 5,000, came right. back up. Then I bought a, um, right after I bought the Rolex, I bought a, um, I got a condo and I bought the, uh, and I bought a Jeep. Do you look back at like, at any purchases, you like, man, what the hell was I thinking? Why the F did I do this? Only thing I looked at like that, I bought a chain and lost it. That's the only reason I said, why did I buy it? I bought like a $25,000 chain and lost it. It was nice too, and lost it. Like I lost it. 
Like, couldn't say, no, nah, I done lost so much jewelry. That's all the mistakes I done made, period. I done lost so much jewelry. I used to have a ring on every finger. I don't wear, I don't want to, I don't want a ring on every finger no more, but back then. You like Liberace. You know what I'm saying? I, I used to wear a <laughs> ring on every finger. You like Hollywood. Hollywood got all them bracelets like that. Y'all oh, yeah. must be related. Hollywood, you, uh, you Hollywood, related? my boy. We you just chilling. <laughs> <laughs> we, I'm saying, I ain't, you know, I think jewelry about it probably be the biggest thing that I'm like, man, why did I spend all that money on jewelry? Right. Like, I don't think I should spend so much money on jewelry. Like, I was going in a jewelry store, like, early, though, 80000 100000 What? I might just open me a jury business. Oh yeah, them folks, we was spinning it. Yeah. When we slowed, I slowed down. Yeah, you should've. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. I read you used to carry a lot of cash on you. You don't do that no more, do you? Nah, I got my card on. Yeah, I used to carry a lot of cash. I used to like the feeling though. You, bro, that's a something, that's gotta be something from the South. It, it Cause I was the same way. Yeah, I wanna feel it. I used to tell people all the time, if you see me with less than 10 grand on me, somebody call the cop, right. somebody just robbed me. Real talk. Yeah, right around the corner, they got me. <laughs> they got me. It, Nah, it I was a feeling though, Uncle. I used to like to just know, like, I can do yeah, anything yes, I want right now. Yes, right yes. Now. That's how I, I mean, I need to feel. I, sometimes I just look at the cat. You know why I stopped though? Man, I, mean, I, people, still, I still keep a little, yeah, but you know, I stopped doing it like that because somebody stole something from me one time. Somebody that I felt like I knew. Right. You know what I'm saying? I had the money in the bag. You know how you carry your duffel. Yeah, I oh, had, yeah, yeah, I had yeah, my yeah, Louis yeah. duffel. I had it in the duffel. 30000 but I had it a long way. Right. Like, I had it like in 20s. Right. So, you know, I got the. 2,000 bands just right. in the bag. Oh, yeah. With the clothes, right. just flexing. Yeah. Go to sleep. It's a room full, though, but it's all supposed to be your people, though. Right. Get the bag back. Wake up in the morning, steal something. You know how it's something in there, but it ain't everything. Right. Looking at it like, this ain't all the cash. You know what I'm saying? And that's when I stopped. Like, I ain't going to carry all the money on me no more. I be getting a lot of money now. I be looking for a bank. I'm like, we got to get to a bank. Yeah, deposit. Yeah, go on deposit. Yeah. Because you could be, you got to think. Ain't that, that, that disappointing? People that you that you have around you think you can trust. What? And they and they do that to you. Man, I had some of my closest people done did stuff to me and they mad at me for stuff they done did to me. They they home grudges against me for stuff they done did. Stole stuff. What? Man, it's it's crazy, man. So what how do you make most of you is it money from touring? Is it the albums? Is it because right. I mean you probably what, you tour how many how many days a year you think you tour? How you many days? I'm probably doing 100, 200? I might do like three shows a week. Yeah, on average. Six months, eight months, nine months. I mean, obviously you take time off, right? Pandemic, that's the only time I took off. Really? In my career. I probably done did more shows than anybody who's done came out with me, for real. I, I done had to hustle, you know what I'm saying? Do you feel you're making up for lost time or do you feel like, okay, I just, I love doing what I'm doing. My fans want to see me. 2021, I was making up for lost time from 2020. Right. I had just got off tour 2020, the King R&B tour. Right. COVID started. So I'm used to going on the road and making money. Right. That slowed us down. So right. I had to jump out there 2021, even while COVID was still going on, and go back out there and get back to where I know I'm supposed to be. Right. You've opened for Chris Brown, uh, uh, Tory Lanez. How, how though, I mean, what's the difference in, like, opening up? Because now, when we talked about we're going to get to that, it's like, now we see comedy shows and RB shows being combined. Mm -hmm. So when you open up for Chris Brown, what's, what, it, it, what's that experience like? That experience for me was, was full circle. Cause you gotta understand, I come from praying that I meet bro one day, right. to talking to bro on the phone, to going to stay with bro, making songs with him, becoming his brother, now opening up on tour for him. Right. It just felt surreal for me, honestly. I remember the first date, I remember I had my outfit laid on the bed like it was the first day of school. First day of school, you didn't have to let that thing out. I had the Air Max, the <laughs> everything laid out on the on the bed. I remember I got there to perform, they put me first. You feel me? Yeah. The fans was kind of mad, like, damn, they putting Jacquees first at the Chris Brown show because they know how close me and CB is. Right. Like, they like, I dang near want to see Jacquees right before CB. Right. You know, so I remember going on first performer, and I remember people from CB camp used to come to the side and watch me. And go back and tell bro, I come back, he tell me like, well, I heard you when I didn't kill it. You know what I'm saying? They used to make me feel good. Right. I'm like, damn, I'm here now. You know right. what I'm saying? And one night I got to open up right before he went out. One night they put me right before he went out and I was just like, dang, this is really what it's made of. Like working hard, like this is what dreams really made of. Like, right. You work hard, you believe, like this is really what you'll be. When I got to open up for him that night, right before he went on, I was like, yeah, God is real. I've been through that, but it's like, it's super, super like crazy how you could pray, believe right. and work hard and do something and then it'll really be right in front of your face before you know it, right. you know, at the perfect time, you right. know what I'm saying?
as I said, we were talking earlier about you was just in San Francisco, mm -hmm. um, you, Monica, DC Young Fly, and you say the thing now is what they're doing is that people are combining comedy shows with R&B shows because you laugh in one minute and you singing and dancing and vibing the next. DC Young Fly had him on. He's a great guy. Is that your, that's your, that, I mean, he from the crib too. Yeah, that's my boy. Well, DC not on the tour, but I'm glad you brought him up because right. DC my brother. Okay. Now we close. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna tell you how I met DC is crazy. I was dropping my EP 19 before I signed the cash, before I did anything. I was at Clark Atlanta doing the release. Right, okay. This one, DC Young Fly was just making videos on his phone. This when he first came up. So I remember I was in there talking, 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 so I'm leaving. I'm like, hey, he like, man, I'm DC Young Fly. Da -da -da. I'm like, man, I'm like, buy my CD. I'm like, because I, I, like, I know you. He's like, man, I ain't got no damn money, man. And I never forget that moment, because I'm like, damn. I seen bro there to seeing where he at now. Right. And just seeing that, like, damn. The nigga was saying, like, he ain't got it then. You know what I'm saying? But right. still came out to support me. Right. You know what I'm saying? Just to all the way making it in movies, being on Wild and Out, like being one of the faces of this culture, of this generation. Right. It's just crazy to know where I met him. And DC done came on tour with me. You know, we done been on the tour bus together. I told bro when we went on tour, I'm like, bro, come on my bus. Like, if we going on tour together, like, you got to come on the bus with me. Right. Like, like, don't be, like, we got to be on the bus together. Right. So that brought us even closer. You right. know what I'm saying? Every time I hit bro, he like, bro, whatever you need. I just did 85 South with him the other day. So right. that's my brother. Performing at club, do you like the more intimate setting or you at the Chase Center and you got 18, 20,000? Or, I mean, the, the R&B, are you a more intimate setting guy, or do you like the big, big arenas? Obviously, the big arenas, the, the money, but the, the setting, the ambiance. Honestly, uh, I feel like now I'm into the arenas. Okay. Because I'm all about levels. See, I can connect anywhere. Right. Because I'll be at the arena, go right to the front, connect right there. I could be able to see somebody from the top. I'll make them put the camera on them and make a moment. Like, okay. I'm ready for that. Like, I know how to do the intimate thing. Like, I know how to make a big crowd feel intimate. I should right. say that. But we see what, I mean, what's going on now? We see Chloe Bailey, people throw stuff. Gorilla had a wig, I mean, I guess, I guess had a wig, had water thrown. What's going on, man? Why we, why we out here wilding? I mean, you pay good money to go see somebody and, and you behave in that manner. We out here wilding, we out here tripping. We out here tripping, that's what I think. I feel like everybody ain't respecting each other. Well, no. we're, not, we're, not, we're not respecting the position that God put people in. Right. And I think that's what it is, I think like, when you see a glow real out there just trying to walk to a car doing a thing, getting some through it, I don't even know what happened to Chloe. That's my little sister. Like, right. we came up together too. Right. We used to do theater together. Because I, I, I look at it like this Why would I pay my money to, if I don't like somebody, you think I'm going to give you my money to come see you? That don't make sense. You think I'm going to buy something that you, you, you promoting or you advertising if I don't rock with you like that? that so sense. you spend your good money to come there and to behave in that manner. I, I don't get it. Everybody want to go viral. Everybody want to be somebody. They'll crash all the way out just to make it. So everybody know their name. And then we saw what happened with the Stampede and, and uh, uh, Finesse times two, two times, excuse me. Um, I didn't even see that, what happened? Well, they, had a, they were performing mm -hmm. and um, uh, they had, uh, there was a Stampede, there was like a, a mad rush to get out of the club and, 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 and people, some people lost their lives. Ain't you know, nobody can, that's, that's just an unfortunate situation. Yeah. Do you, do you ever concern, do you ever get worried about, damn, man, I just, because uh, where, who was that? Somebody, somebody had passed away. Uh, Travis Scott mm -hmm. had the situation a couple of years ago mm -hmm. um, at at uh, at one of his events, and you know people lost their lives and some people were injured. Do that thought ever cross your mind? No, it never crossed my mind. But I think I was talking about it the other days, and then he could have did to control that. Right. You know when you when you're a big artist and people come out to your shows, they're gonna show you love. They're gonna be out there just. They're going to be going crazy. They're right. going to be excited. They're going to be moving around. They're going to be singing. And it's going to be a large group of people. Right. But there's nothing the artist can do to control that. So right. I just feel like it's, it's bad when they try to blame it on the artist. Right. There's nothing I can do. I'm up here performing my records. And people are out there, you know, engaging to my records. It's in a, like I said, it's, in a, it's an unfortunate situation. But that's, I don't think the people should blame the artist for what's going on right. at their concerts. People right. used to follow that Michael Jackson shows. Right. Left and right. Right. Like, nobody ever blamed Mike for no. that. Like you blame Mike for getting up there and pausing so long that people just, you know. Yeah, what I'm yeah, you know, you let the thing marinate. Yeah, yeah. Mike sit up there and pause. You feel me? <laughs> and people calling out, but yeah. it's like nobody ever blame Mike for that. Right. So I don't feel like we should blame Trav for that, you know. Right. Or no other artist that ever go through nothing like that. You do realize 
that when you reach your level of success, they don't really compare you to other people, they compare you to your old work. You said a mouthful. You look at Mike, he had some great albums after Thriller, mm -hmm. but it was all, everybody always talked about Thriller, 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 and it drove him, for lack of a better word, crazy because he was trying to reach that level of success again and he didn't realize. I never knew that. That was a once in a lifetime. Do you, like, you have, I mean, when you do 30 million, you do 50 million albums, and then your next album comes out and you do 13 million, you're like, man, I'm a failure. Right. But do you realize what 13 million albums are? Right. But you just hit 50. So you and your old work, they like, man, Queez, I mean, the thing good, but that old album, Man, that man, you know, when he came, man, when he came out, he was hard. Do you worry about that? No, and you know what's so crazy? I see it a lot now. I see people saying like, man, I miss that mood, Jacquees. I miss that, I miss that 4275, yeah. Jacquees. But I was thinking, like, I listened to my whole catalog. Not, not even the whole catalog. I listened like five hours on my catalog driving from San Francisco to L.A. yesterday. And I was listening to it through... And I was just like, nothing's changed. Right. I was like, it's elevated. You know what I'm saying? I think what's happened was it was it's me as a person. That's what I think. I think that when I when I made the King of R and B statement, right. I think that just turned everybody. Right. I think it just made everybody like, let's figure out something to say about him. Right. Cause it's hard to get to him. Right. So let's figure out what can we say to make him feel some type of way. You can't say nothing, but let's just try everything. Right. Like, now let's try to say, like, he need to sound like his OCDs. They try to do that to Jay-Z. Right. But Ho said, you want the old Ho, buy my old album. <laughs> you feel me? Like, buy the old album. That sound like something Ho would say. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Niggas want the old me, buy the old album. Do, have you studied old legends and tried to figure out what they did to remain on top? Most definitely. I'm a student of the game. Um, I know the I know the I know the number one thing you can do is like take care of yourself, take care of right. your mental, you know, and just evolving as an artist, keeping a keeping the illusion alive. Mm -hmm. I feel like as an artist, you got to keep an illusion. You can't never let people get too comfortable. Can't never let people know they know you too much. You know, certain people you can, but I mean like like everybody that's on the other side of the curtain. Right. You know, you can't really give them too much, or they start to feel like they know you. And once people feel like they start to know you. I feel like your worth go down. Right. So I try to I try my best to just keep my illusion up. I try to switch it up so much. Like I just had my hair like short. You know, I just had it short, just trying to do something different for my fans to keep them intrigued and to keep them excited. I feel like as an artist, you gotta just always switch it up. You gotta always just keep the fans excited, keep the people talking. You gotta, it's so much you gotta do. It's more than music. I tell everybody like to be a superstar, I believe it's more than just music. LMA, um, when you guys gonna hop back on the track, there was a situation that transpired I mean, I don't know. I just seen that at the Rock Nation brunch. Did you? We spoke. I said, "What's up, LMA?" She said, "Hey, Jacquees." <laughs> that, 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 that ain't no. That ain't, I mean, that's that's that's. But see, her best friend used to run with me uh -huh. when I used to go out the country. Right. Her best friend Bianca. I'm calling names. <laughs> you feel me? Her best friend used to run with me out there. Right. That 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 works close with her. Right. So whenever I would go out there for my runs, she would come with me. You know, help me assist me do do right. do, do different things. Right. So when the whole thing happened with Trip, it was just crazy because it's like. It started off as a thing where I told LML, like, I'm finna remix this song. And okay. she was with it. Okay, but you know what you gotta do if you remix somebody's song. No, aunt, listen, you ain't gotta clear nothing. You ain't gotta clear nothing, you gotta go to no clearances if you're not selling it. I wasn't selling it. Cause when you selling it, they call it monetizing. Yeah. When you monetize off a record, you're making money. Right. I wasn't monetizing off of the trip record. Now mind you, I'm a book, I'm gonna get booked for shows. Right. We all gonna get booked for shows, but this a uh, it's like a mixtape jacket for beats. I jacked her beat and I made a, I made the song. I made my own version to your record. Right. I kept some of the cadences the same and switched the lyrics and did my thing. That's not illegal. Right. Wayne used to do it. Every other artist do it. Think about it. YG got a hit record right now on the radio. All I really want is a, it's a hit. Right. Every time Jacqueline do it, it's a problem. It was a problem with them. LMA started hating me from that. When I pulled up the record, when I posted on Instagram, she put the fire emojis all under it. Like, right. it's crazy. Right. But she thought you was making some money off of it. T-Pain came out and said that I was monetizing off of the record. Right. So once he came out and said that I was monetizing off of the record publicly, 
I'm pretty sure the industry and of course guys that she's around that has real knowledge of the game probably got to her and was like, this ain't right. Right. Which I feel like and I believe that at that moment we should have came together. And they should have put me on the remix for real and we should have took it up through that. Right. I believe that would have been crazy. Right. Me and DJ Mustard talking about doing some work now. You know, we trying to get to the point of me and LMA actually on a record together. Right. So I'm cool with DJ great. Mustard. Yeah, I'm cool with DJ Mustard. We went through whatever we went through behind all that, but now we cool, so I feel good about that. So I feel like looking towards the future, the fans could expect a song from us, man. Right. Yeah. Uh, I saw T-Pain. I, he did a song. Yeah. T-Pain can really sing. That's my boy. I mean, he can really sing without the auto-tune. Yeah, that's my boy. He was on my mixtapes. Like, that's my boy. I mean, no, the, the pain can sing. Sing. I'm with pain. <laughs> I rock with her. So, so what, what are your thoughts on auto-tune? My thoughts on auto-tune is everybody has it on in the studio. It's just about what level you have it at. Right. Because auto-tune is really put there to keep you on tune of the key of the song. Right. So if you singing out of key, it's just to keep you up. Now, mind you, you can have auto-tune and auto-tune will still hit a wrong note. It's not going to just make you be able to sing. Right. But if you put it to a certain level, you will be able to sing. The level T-Pain got it at, he wanted to do that. Right. Because you could, if you could really sing, you could hear through T-Pain auto-tune and know, like, a record really sing for it. Right. Like, he just really playing with it. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's just different levels to the auto-tune. You can have it on... 40, you can have it on 20, 10, whatever you wanted to. So, all right, man, I might may go in the studio and hit me and do a little something there. Get something in there. <laughs> yeah, don't try to hit that stage. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think like men of a dinner. <laughs> Straight up. So, you, are you, you a big sports fan, right? Yeah, you know it. Who's your team? What's, what team? Huh? Football. Don't you say them dirty birds. Either. I'm saying, now I got to tell you, I'm a dirty bird fan just because for City, but I follow players, though. Okay. Who your favorite player? Favorite player right now in the NFL? Um, Kyle Pitts, that's my brother. You know what okay. I'm saying? Kyle, that's my boy. But okay. Tied in from the Falcons. Yeah, we stay in the same neighborhood. But favorite player from the NFL right now is probably my boy. Uh, you know my boy. Lamar uh, Jackson. Lamar Jackson? Yeah. You like Action Jackson, huh? Of course. They ain't breaking him off, though, man. That's crazy. But then somebody told me why they, they I feel like they ain't breaking him off. They say he be getting hurt. But I'm like, you still got to get rid of money. He still worth the money. I ain't know he be getting hurt. He get hurt. I mean, you play the, you play the game of football, you're going to get hurt. Yeah. So what's your favorite? Who's your favorite player in basketball? Right now? Yeah. Uh, ja. Okay. Yeah, Ja. Give me some What advice? If you could sit, if Ja was sitting right here, you sitting across from him. It's so crazy because I'm older than bro. Like, I could really be like, little bro. Yeah. What would you tell him? Little bro, you just got to chill. That's it. Like, you know, we with you. Ain't nobody going to sit here and down you and nothing like that. Right. You know what I'm saying? But you just got to chill. Like, let's just get it together because you got them M's on the line. Right. And you got these kids looking up to you. You know what I'm saying? So I would just tell them, like, bro, we just got to chill. We just got to reroute right quick. You know right. what I'm saying? That's it. You mentioned uh, <laughs> they call Jaquez Rogers uh, was one of your favorite players. He was a small guy, yeah. Lil Wayne. Did your height? Did you ever, did you, were you ever like, damn, man, I wish I was tall. Man, I wish I was six foot tall, bro. I, ooh, if I was six foot tall, whew. Are you telling niggas that? <laughs> like, boy, like, boy, like, boy, if I was six feet, boy. For real, though. Because I'm like, God didn't want that to happen to y'all, boy. Because he already know what Come like, look at me at five, six. <laughs> y'all niggas be in trouble. I'm like, at six foot, que? Come on, bro. Like, what? That would right. Imagine that, huh? Imagine right. I walked in here six foot. Sang like I can sing, dress like I dress. I'm already a problem at five six, but imagine I'm six foot. Boy, them boys are in trouble. Be they in trouble now, but just imagine. You'd be a combination of Nick Cannon and the future. But we probably need to be right here. Right yeah, now. you have about twenty four feet. Like for real, <laughs> real, real talk. Like straight up. Like, we need to be right here for real. You prank, you prank talk Charles Barkley on uh, 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 yeah, on his show. Yeah, what what was that like? It was good because I had just seen Chuck in the city. Right. And he chumped me off because I was with uh, Victor Cruz. Right. Victor Cruz down there. Victor like, Chuck, you know Jacquees? He like, yeah, I know Jacquees. I know I was used, but Jacquees, come on, man. You see him I'm trying to do something. He was, he was kicking it, but he was playing with me, right. yo, but he was kicking it on me. Right. I'm like, oh, I got something. <laughs> I'm going to wait till the perfect time. Away. And right. I, got, I just got him on TV. So right. it was fun because he had no idea. He coming back there, Queen, what you doing? Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm chilling. Yeah, you remember that? You remember that how you, you yeah. brushed by the other day? Yeah, you okay. remember. Okay, I'm going to get you with this snow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm TV. You mentioned that the uh, the viral moment, um, the Lakers game, the national anthem. What was, I mean, 
national anthem and singing for the Lakers. I mean, everybody thinks I don't, you weren't born then with Marvin Gaye. He might have had the best, one of the best renditions. Mm -hmm. He and Whitney Houston, when she sung it at the Super Bowl, uh, I think it was in I don't um, Tampa, maybe Tampa. I forget where it was. She did her rendition, but Marvin Gaye's rendition. I think I seen it on YouTube. He switched it up. <sighs> yeah. Did he? Yeah. <sighs> I mean, he might be the real. See, you ain't even mentioned him, King R&B, but I'm gonna let that slide. That's something else. We, See, I ain't know. I ain't know we were going like. I thought Marvin Gaye was about like, so. He whatever. My Marvin Gaye was whatever. He whatever. <laughs> he whatever. Hey, he, was, he, cause he was really like yeah, that. Yeah. So, so what was that? I mean, when you get the call and like, okay, we would like for you to perform the national anthem at the Lakers game. So now what's what's because you know, eighteen thousand Lakers is packed, stars lined up, and they're just like, okay, I gotta nail this thing. All I'm thinking is, I'm going to kill it. And I'm thinking, like, man, Brian, I'm going to be in here. Right. Mello. Right. Because I used to be around Mello when I was, like, 14. So, right. like, Mello going to see me again. You know what I'm saying? Like, he going to see me on this level. Mm -hmm. So, like, I got to kill it. And I felt good because they gave me a sound check. Mm -hmm. So, once I did the sound check, I'm like, oh, it sounds like this. I'm, I'm going to do my it's thing. Over. Once I walked in, they was doing their stretch. Westbrook seen me. I, I got that from all the guys. Right. Talking to Mello for me. I'm like, my confidence went up. Then the White House, my boy. Came in like, Queen, why didn't you tell me you were here? Da, 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 da. I was just like, oh, yeah, it feel like we in the crib. I'm finna kill this. Like, this ain't no pressure like right. I thought it was gonna be these boys. Right. It ain't nothing. You feel me? I got up there, did my thing, and we went viral. You did. I'm, li I'm looking at your business, the uh, uh, your tapper bar. It's not really that. You got hookah, wine, daiquiris, salmon bites, shrimp and grits, brunch. You play R&B music in the background. Bro, you got a, you got a spot. Yeah, I spot. want you to come to uh, I'm gonna come. I'm for real. I'm gonna hold you to it now. When next time you gonna when next time you gonna be an A? I've been I'm gonna get I'm gonna get your info. I'll be I'll swing through. I'm for real. I'm for real too. Yeah. I ain't got no money on me though. I'm leaving my credit card home. No, 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 no. When I show up, I, I I I I do right by my bit. I do right. Yeah. I mean, you, and you said it was a, it it meant a lot to you to be a black man and to be to establish a business in your community that employ other blacks. Growing up, did you like, man, I want to make it to be, a, have a, be in a situation where I can give back? Oh, yeah, I always wanted to give back. You know, I was always around other guys that was already giving back to the community. Right. I was already around the bosses that had the barbershops, that was investing into the community, that was giving people opportunities. So I already knew it was going to be in me to do it. I knew I was the next one up. I right. knew, like, man, when I get my chance, I'm going to do it. And my grandmother was big on that. Mm -hmm. My grandmother used to give everybody an opportunity. So I'm like, you know, I'm going to follow in these footsteps and give everybody an opportunity. And that's exactly what I did. Bruh. That was, I'm gonna tell that. Man, it up, uh. we, we did, hey, that thing flew by. Yeah. I appreciate you stopping by, taking time out of your busy schedule to sit down and give me 65, 70 minutes of your time. I know you're very busy, so stop. thank you for stopping by Club Shay Shay. Talk about, tell us about the album, uh, and we head back on you. the roll. Sincerely for you out right now. Mm -hmm. Executive produced by Future, like we talked about. It's my third album, the new single, Sincerely for You. I mean, the new single, When You Bad Like That, is out right now. Tell Me It's Over, featuring Summer Walker in Black. It's probably gonna be the next single that they could be looking out for. Um, be looking out me in some, uh, looking out for me in some movies this year. Um, more TV, more radio, my label. I got a lot of artists that's on the way, and just more greatness for me. Tell us about the restaurant. The Wine and Tapas Lounge at Stonecrest. If you ever in Atlanta, Georgia, on the east side in the Stonecrest area, make sure y'all pull up to the Wine and Tapas Lounge. We got wine and tapas, but we also got a little. Side menu, you can get the shrimp and grits, the salmon bites, you can get whatever you want from the wine and tapas. Shrimp and grits. In, in the, the city. South. Oh, yeah, in the south, in the city, most definitely. Again, bro, all love, all continue love. success. All my life, been grinding all my life. Sacrifice, hustle, pay the price. Want a slice, got the roll of dice, that's why. All my life, I've been grinding all my life. Yeah. All my life, been grinding all my life. Sacrifice, hustle, pay the price. Want a slice, got the roll of dice. That's why all my life I've been grinding all my life.